there I am, 22 years old, lost. It's past midnight, and I'm hiding in a random apartment complex on some stranger's back porch. It's too dark to see. I feel the liquid with my fingertips, so I know that I'm cut and I'm bleeding all over. There's no pain because I'm tripping my face off on acid. I'm listening for police sirens, hoping whoever lives here doesn't decide to come out back for a smoke. How do things get so fucked up? I wasn't always like this. I had a pretty normal childhood, didn't I? I spent a lot of time alone as a child. I still played with other kids in the neighborhood when I could, but when they weren't around, I quickly discovered the joy in losing myself in my own imagination without the distraction of others. All I needed was a stick. The stick was my lightsaber, my sword, my baseball bat, my baton, my machine gun, my paintbrush, my magic wand. It was entertainment for hours, days, years. I grew up in the suburbs, the equivalent to a cubicle job in an office building. For what it lacked in uniqueness and style, it made up for with an abundance of kids to play with and the freedom to go outside whenever I wanted to explore the neighborhood and use my imagination. My dad was a cop, my mom was a nurse, two kids, my sister and I, and a dog. Oof, oof. We were about as conventional as a white working class family gets. I was safe and sound. My love-hate relationship with the Burbs. Within this two-story pre-built fortress of safety and happiness, I grew. As a very young lad, I compiled an impressive booger collection on the wall next to my bed. My love for abstract art already blossoming. This was way before Stimpy made it cool with his nose goblin collection. The woods were an important part of the landscape in my neighborhood. My friends and I would travel its trails daily. A relatively intricate system of pathways developed over the years. We knew the shortcut to everyone's house through the woods. We knew the route so well we would regularly navigate our way between them in the darkness of the night without issue. We discovered different ponds, creeks, and named them. One in particular, called Frog Pond, was our go-to spot to catch crawfish. I would disappear into the woods all day and come home at night. People don't offer their children as much freedom anymore, and I'm guilty of it too. The abundance of horror stories from the media mixed with an explosion of incredible technology has locked us inside. When I was very young, my parents told me that they never had to put me to sleep. I would just hop on my hobby horse and ride the night away. When the squeaky springs began to slow down, they would run into my room to catch me before I hit the floor. Sometimes they made it, sometimes they didn't. When I was five, the movie Ghostbusters hit the theaters. I was a big fan. I thought Bill Murray was awesome. Still do. My friend Chris and I set out to rid our yards of bees, more accurately, European hornets. We donned wiffle ball bats and dubbed our unit the Bee Busters. The hornets made their nests at the base of oak trees in my yard. We'd catch them coming in and out in a high stakes version of whack-a-mole. We took the job pretty seriously. We wanted neighbors to hire us to take care of all their pesky hornet problems. Our ultimate goal was to make the newspaper. Headline reads, two local kids make neighborhood a safer place via animal cruelty. While initially my curiosity with nature was expressed through violence, it would later manifest itself into a deep appreciation for wildlife and nature in general. But at five years old, I was busting hornets' asses. By the end of the summer, dead hornets were littered all over the lawn. Even my dad was impressed. They even had a Bee Busters birthday cake made for me. This was it. At age five, I'd figured out what I wanted to do with my life. Kill hornets with a wiffle ball bat until I became famous. It was all going as planned until I started swinging at hornets in mid-flight. One sting on my forehead and my Bee Buster dreams faded away. Those hornets pack a punch. At times, I would lay silently in a field, watching the clouds approach from behind the treetops that swayed in the afternoon breeze. I'd close my eyes, and when I opened them, the sky had changed. 
the wind would push the clouds so quickly overhead that each time I shut my eyes and opened them, new patterns had emerged. The sound of the breeze rustling through the trees, backdrop by the ever-changing sky, this fleeting moment of childhood suspending me within a daydream I would never fully emerge from for the rest of my life, lost in thought.